hello guys uh, i know it's been a while sorry i've been ill but i'm back now so welcome to my channel motion with nas and on this channel i teach out weekly tutorials for you to just learn and grow as a motion designer without wasting so much of your time let's get into today's video so in today's video we are going to be creating this we are going to be creating this magnification glass or zoom or trans or whatever it is you want to call it and i'm pretty sure you're going to have so much fun in doing this right don't forget the project file is in the link in the description and if you like tutorial like this let me know in the comment section if you are new to this channel make sure you subscribe and of course you know the drill make sure you like and share with other motion designers as well okay now i'll see you after the video So first I actually have this scene I've created here already and it's just a simple scene so let me just solo this. So this is the background which is just a plain color background. I created it on that solid and added grid effect to it. it takes a setting and this is what I have and then I have my text comp here. So I double click this, this is what I have. So this is my text comp. So let me go back. Then I have my circle which which I applied deep glow to uh, but first I actually make sure it's gradient it's radial gradient and I added all this color gradient to it to have something cool like this after that I added deep glow to it yeah I think that's all about it so this let me do this for now then after that I have my color correction I added vignettes to it to just to make sure it brings that into focus and what I want to do now is to create that focus you know, like that magnification effect I can easily just just select this and duplicate and then I'll delete the effect on this and I'll change this to EFX let me change the color something like this so I can can be very obvious now I'm going to take the stroke and I'm going to change it to no stroke but then I'm going to change it to feel right and I have something like this so next thing I like to do is to change this to adjustment layer icon here. If I click this, it's change this whole layer to adjustment layer. And remember, we use ellipse for this. So now I would like to add an effect called borge. So it's a distortion effect. As you can see, can you see what it's doing here already? So I would like to move this, change this to 260. Change the vertical to 262 as well. That will make it really, really large. Can you see? If I take this, for instance, if I take the budge center and then drag it down, I know, can you see what we have already? Can you see it's already distorting? I'll change the antilation to I. I'll change the budge height to 1.7. I just want to make it like this so that it can be very, very obvious. I'll change the temp taper to 93. And that will taper the edges some more. And that be done, I also like to add a fast box blur to this. Do this. And I'll do about, let's say, 113 to this. Now everything becomes very blurry. But then I am going to come here and I'm going to create a mask. So I'll click this. Instead of it drawing a ship, I have to make sure it's a mask. So I'll click on this so right to change to a mask icon. And then I'll just click and drag. This can be very tricky, but then you have like your guide. Uh, let me uncheck this circle line for now. Let me just focus on this. Select the mask. I will make sure I double click this and then zoom in. Make sure this is at the center. Yeah, something like this would do. I will increase the feathering to about 157 because I actually want this blur to affect the edges, not the whole thing. So what I would like to do is to come here, then go to effects, go to fast box blur. Can you see this composition options here? So I will now do plus and with this, you can see the icon has changed. So that means the effect is actually going to be uh, it's actually going to be revealing within the mask instead of it affecting everything it's going to be revealing within the mask all i need to do now i'll go to my mask i'll click this and do subtract and um, by that you can see that there's no more blur the blur has actually reduced quite a lot here so what i need to do now is to reduce the blur till it kind of makes sense right something like this can you see now now that is looking very very interesting but then i can still adjust the feathering right to see what really works so if i reduce it you can see that the edge are really really blurred out 
right but then let me just reduce the blur to let us see 1.5 and let me increase the max expansion something like this and i think i'm pretty satisfied with this right just a little bit of some depth here and i'm done with this now i'm going to select the efx i'm going to duplicate it and this time around i'm going just going to hide this and i'm going to add my text because i would like to just focus on this alone meanwhile i need to delete all the settings and then i also need to delete the masks that's on this so let me change the color of this to purple and i'll name this to gradient so now on this gradient i'll make sure that it's no more an adjustment layer so I'll click this and i'll open this up and i'll go to the content and i'll see that i have ellipse so this is actually the shape that makes up the shape layer so i'll go to the ellipse i'll open this up i will let me first of all delete this i don't need to gradient stroke here so i'll come here because it's a feel so all i need to do is select this the shape and come here and make sure i select the radial gradient so right and i'll click ok now with this i can click on this and change the color so this i'm going to select this and i'm going to change it to something like this like a purple and i'm going to select this and it's just going to be white it can actually be anything but what i would like to do is to change the opacity of this to zero by just clicking this and then the opacity here should be 100 so yeah i think this is fine and i'm going to click ok now you can see the handles here it's very hard to see that's because of the color but you can let me see if i can change it okay great you can see the handles here these are handles for the gradient so all i need to do is just take this and then drag up and i have something really cool like this now i'm done with that so the next thing i would like to do is to duplicate this ellipse so let me make sure this is purple circle so that will now be blue circle now i'm going to close this up i'm going to open this up and then on the gradient i'm going to come here and i am going to edit the gradient and with this i'm just going to come here and change the color to something like this now i'm just going to come here and then i can just change the direction of this let's do something like this can you see that the two colors are even trying to blend but then you can actually have something more interesting like this by just adjusting it now you now have those two colors now i have this too and i can just close this up because i think i'm good with this now if i activate my efx and activate my text and i have something really really cool like this uh by the way if i solo this i actually did a rotation animation to this so that's why it's rotating really fast so i actually added an expression to make it rotate really really fast so that's why it's rotating and then with that i think i just need to select this one more time let me change the color of this back to purple and duplicate it and this time around i'm going to name it stroke let me just select this and select this color so i can be able to identify and this time around i'm going to open this up i just need only one so i'll click on this and i'll delete so let me hide all of this so that it won't confuse us and i'll delete i'll select this let me just change the name stroke i would hide the gradient field and then what i would like to do is to go to this then add stroke so let me increase this so i can see so it can be very obvious so what i would like to do is to open up my stroke and go to taper then increase the length to this so you can see how this is uh, let us increase the length of the end length too but what i would also like to do is to add trim parts i'm going to just reduce strength the end frame like this and i am going to reduce the stroke width to about two pixels uh, maybe i can make it more obvious let's do about four pixels so the idea of this is to have like an highlight so let me just make it stroke highlight basically so and that's just the idea so if i solo this this is what i have and, and if you want you can change the blend mode to uh, screen or things like that how to glow to it and make it more cool but basically this is the 
idea of it let's get to the animation part so what i would like to do because i want this gradient to be more like the control i'll select this and let me just name it to gradient and control i will select the efx to follow the gradient i also select the stroke i like to follow this so what happens is whenever i move this to the left to the right can you see it's actually moving but there's a problem it's not actually you know revealing the way we want it to right i'll undo that so all we need to do is to go to our efx and go to our bulge so we have the bulge center so what i'll do is i'll alt click this and then i would click it to the gradient control and i will just click out so if i uncheck this and then if i move this left to right can you see it's actually going accordingly and with this we are good so let me just make sure that is at the center and i think you can add simple position animation to this so I'll just press p come here for instance uh let's say at this point so this is actually rotating that's because uh, there was a rotation animation applied to it before so let me uncheck this remember that i duplicated the circle line and that had a rotation animation so that's why that is happening so i need to press r for this uncheck that and i think i'm good okay i think i'm good nothing is rotating again which is great so i can take this now and do something like this so let's say come down it can even be from the bottom like this let's say to the top and if i scroll over it it's actually very very on point with this so what i will just do or what i will say is you can actually use this different ways to achieve this kind of result and if you want to make this do a magnification glass or you need to do is just create a simple rectangle for this so let me just do this make sure that this is not gradient and then let me zoom out i can click this and have something like this and um, make sure this is attached very well to this i can still go as far as you know stylizing it to make it really really look cool but you guys get the old gist and i'll just parent it straight to the gradient control and with this you can have your magnification for and you can even be trying to be more creative so let's say at this point it's here set the position here and uh, maybe you still drag it down a little bit more just a tiny bit and then it goes so i'll do easy ease get my graph editor do something like this and then do something like this Maybe I can actually leave that video like that. Let's see how that looks like. We can actually work with this. So in addition to this, you can keep tweaking the animation. In addition to this, in order to force to stylize it very well. So I can also take this and then add layer styles to this. So right click, go to layer styles and I'll add inner shadow. And with inner shadow, I'll open this up. I can change the color to uh, like a dark blue maybe something like this would do like this kind of blue and increase the size to about 70 it's making a little bit of difference then choke i'll do let's say 53 then noise i'll make this 100 let me just zoom in can you see what we have coming together so this is without inner shadow this is with inner shadow and then the next one i like to add the next layer styles i like to add is bevel and emboss so let me add that and with that you can see some results here already so i open this up and i'll change this from pillow emboss to emboss i'll change the depth to about 82 i'll change the side to about 12 change the softening to about 10 then I can just play with maybe the attitude or the angle. Uh, let me play with the angle to see what works for me. Right now, that is too obvious. So let me make it 40. I think that's what it was before. 
so i'll change the shadow color to some kind of red like this right and i can just increase this side to be more obvious then maybe i'll just make this on 75 and make this screen and with this i think we are good so let me just close this up and see how it looks like can you see so with the additional detail can you see what it looks like now right now it's looking more really really more organic so you can there are different ways to achieve this right with this same technique i was able to achieve something like this right when you have this glass thing if you guys know this recent project done by one very crazy agency um easy furrows or something and the project was about sound i saw a lot of stuff that has to do with transparency and animation and things like that and that was actually inspired this tutorial like okay i need to know how to actually achieve this distortion yeah and uh, this is how i created this and we can still go on and then stylize it to what we want but this is how i get to achieve this and i just want to quickly you know teach you guys how this can be done let me take this and put it under my color correction right so that it can blend in well with the scene and we've come to the end of the tutorial all right guys i really hope you do enjoy that like i said before if you are new to my channel make sure you subscribe and if you enjoy this video make sure you like it so that it can get to other people that needs to watch it and also the project file is in the link in the description so you can just download it and then have access to all the things that i've done and let me see you guys in the next video. Alright, take care.